Just start on the camo grind. Hey, you got this, man. It's it's a very approachable camo grind this year. So I think... I don't think it should be too hard. It's just kind of tedious. There's priceless. All right, boys. This is it. I'm going to I'm gonna clear these guys out just for the, the clips. All right, kill me. I don't care. 10 more kills. 10 burst kills is all we need, and we have Interstellar. If I can't get 10 kills on, on this next 100 points of domination on Favela, we might have a problem. Two. I also, I also did not need... Dude. Oh, my God. I, I'm having the toughest time getting 10 kills. 10! I think we need one more, right? One or two more. Hey, hey, hey! There we go, baby! Now, now we can play the game. Now we can finally play Modern Warfare 3. <laughs> nice. Cool. Uh, I don't care what happens the rest of the game now. I, I, I completed my goal. Show me the money. Come on, come on, come on. Let's go! Modern Warfare 3's Interstellar Camo. This year's mastery camo and the culmination of a grind over mastering every single weapon in the multiplayer arsenal. Today we're running down how to best achieve this camo and to do it in the most efficient and easiest to obtain manner. Of course, this is the grind for the entire year, so take it at whatever pace you'd like, grind it out now or grind it over the course of the next few months. The tips and hopefully helpful information in this video can apply all the same, no matter when you do it. So as we go along, drop your thoughts down below. What do you think of the grind this year for the Interstellar Camo? You going for it, maybe active or passively? What are the case? Drop your thoughts down below. If you enjoyed the video, you find it at all insightful, do me a favor and drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe to stay updated with all things Modern Warfare 3, with guides, tutorials, news coverage, best classes, all that kind of stuff. We've got you covered here on the channel with a lot still up on deck with not only stuff that I still want to cover here for launch, but also season one and the Warzone launches upcoming. I'd love to have in the community. Finally, check out my friends over at Gamer Advantage for their Black Friday sales, where there's a site-wide 25% off discount, but code Espresso stacks on top of that, giving you one of the best deals all year of 30 35% off your entire order, but more on that later. For now, let's jump into the mastery guide on interstellar camo. So first and foremost, the interstellar grind this year, as with last year, is more tedious than challenging per se. There's not really all that many challenges that are painstaking, but instead, most of it comes to simply putting in the time for the weaponry, ranking each of those up, and some conscious efforts for some challenges here and there. The rest can come pretty naturally. We've already put up two guides on the best ways to rank up your weapons, but for full transparency and to keep everything in one location, I'd highly recommend either, as of recently, the zombies spore contract farming method or playing kill confirmed and spamming tags as well as throwing decoy grenades with every life if you want further insight into either of those you can check out the individual videos for further details but those would be my two recommendations zombies if you don't want to sweat it out and kill confirmed being if you want to rank up your weapons and work on camos at the same time though honestly despite in theory playing zombies first and then going back to do camos i kind of like that method when ranking stuff up for most of the challenges it was made possible to knock out a ton of them all at once instead of working my way up to them and having some dead space while ranking those weapons up. So I genuinely didn't mind that option this year. Plus, no skill-based. I just got to chill with my friends, talk in Discord, listen to music, all that good stuff. Now, most of these weapons are relatively straightforward to rank up, but there are things like your launchers or your knives, the stuff that doesn't have a ton of levels to them, but still requires some levels first before we get to your weapon camos, that I'd recommend going for things like domination flags or capture tags and kill confirmed passively with those out when you do those specific items, instead of relying on getting kills with them, but also working on other weapons at the same time. It's just one of those things that like, why do I want to get kills with it if it's doesn't track towards my challenges just yet. A sort of mental hurdle that maybe only I have, but that's the way that I looked at it. Second, whatever method you decide to do, make sure you have double XP of some kind active where applicable. That will just help progress the grind as quick as possible. I had a ton of questions asking how I had so many double weapon XP tokens at my disposal, and it's all just because I didn't use them over the course of the last year or so for many DLC weapons, and also I had basically every single CDL match on my second monitor while I worked up and open during the entire season there. So each 
each year the CDL offers viewership rewards, especially for like regular league matches, not even just majors where there's other additional viewership rewards. But for most of the like regular matches, every hour of watch time would give you a double XP token of some kind. I think it alternated back between rank and double weapon XP tokens. So you'd get an hour double weapon XP token like every two hours or so. And when you have those streams tabbed for weeks on end in the second monitor there as you do your daily work on the main monitor, starts to add up. So that was something that really helped out me. But also if you had extra tokens left over from the battle pass last year, at any point, those of course carried over into this year. Also do take advantage of double weapon XP weekends as of recording this and probably as of this publishing, there is going to be one right now. So you don't even have to use any tokens, which is definitely nice. Third and the final note before jumping into weapon specific items is except that this will take time and hit your stats. Don't worry about your KD or your win loss. You can bounce those back up whenever you get things done. And in the wise words of Eric Cartman when you can finally play the game. For reference, it took me about two and a half days of play time to rank up everything and complete all the challenges. I'd say that's a slightly above average pace. I certainly wasn't the fastest to do it, but I also do know that I could have done it a bit more leisurely. That was just the time that it took me to solely focus on all this kind of stuff and still having some hiccups here and there where maybe it wasn't the most time efficient manner on my end. But anyways, just note that kind of stuff, but let's talk about weaponry. So for the gold level challenges or rather gilded, it was nice to have these and coming back to it, if it influences your opinion at all, I really liked it that I could come back and all these were about the same for weapon category. So let's just say you did zombies. You could come back, for example, and knock out all the assault rifles with the same 50 kills, 50 kills while ADS, 15 headshot kills, and 25 kills in tax stance, all in the same go for whatever weapon in the assault rifle category. Oftentimes, I'd be able to find myself doing these than just only 75 to 100 kills per weapon. If you're accurate, you can knock out those headshots for rifles in the same amount of kills as the base and headshot. And then three and one for the tax stance is just the conscious change. So 75 kills across the board for all that kind of stuff. So you could knock out all those in one go. And then on the gold, the three kills in one mag that you just kind of had to focus on. That can be said for most of the base challenges across the board. But now that I mentioned it, I do want to mention that some challenges are kind of bugged. I mentioned that challenge as a starting point of the three kills in one mag for the gilded or gold challenge because while they will track properly for three kills reload three kills reload you may also gain credit where you didn't actually get three kills it seems like you can get three kills even if they are broken up though some tracking issues may still occur so for example say you get two kills die and then get one kill it seems like that will actually track as three kills in one mag if that's the case just be sure to as i often would sort of close that loop and I'd reload, making it reset manually at that point. So then my next three kills would go towards the next three after that. But I'd also reset it for more than just that rollover effect, because as it seems, getting, say, six kills in one mag didn't appear to progress it any faster than in prior games where, like, five kill streaks would credit you twice if you got a 10 kill streak. So we'll see this kind of thing happen throughout the forged and priceless challenges as well, but for the rest of the gilded challenges, that's about it for that style of sort of carryover challenge. But other gilded challenges that I want to touch on that may seem a bit bothersome or could use some tips here for this come down to SMGs. The 10 kills without the enemy damaging you, just play hardcore for this one because it might not be 10 kills exactly, but it'll be pretty close because in most cases, you're not going to be getting hit with stray bullets and staying alive. So most of the time when you get 10 kills, it'll be 10 kills without taking any damage. Shotguns, two kills in one life shortly after sprinting. This doesn't have to be tactical sprint, though it can be, so it may be easier than you may think initially. I'd say just run towards an objective or a high traffic area and kit your weapons out for sprint to fire speeds and you'll get it done way quicker than you can imagine, probably all in one game. LMGs, two kills without releasing the trigger 10 times. This is perhaps the most annoying gold challenge out there, I'd firstly recommend hardcore since it takes less rounds to kill. You're usually going to kill in one or two shots at that point, but smaller maps and high traffic areas are everything for this. You essentially need 10 double kills, but by emptying the belt or mag in the process. It also is entirely luck based in some degree where if there's a second player or not, because you can't lay off that trigger for even half a second. Otherwise, it doesn't count. Rust Hardcore is key for this one. And with Rust 24-7 coming up, I'd highly recommend taking advantage of that one. Because it is such a smaller map, it is something that you can end up finding those kills way easier than, say, on like Sub Base or Wasteland or something like that. Marksman's 10 kills with a laser attachment. Simply just put on a laser. Truly is just 10 kills for Gilded at that point. Snipers, 10 kills while focused down sights. That's something you just have to hold that right thumbstick down to go into focus mode. 
Not every scope will have it pop up on the UI, but it should count across the board so long as you do hold that right thumbstick in as you're about to aim down sight and shoot. Handguns, 10 kills without the enemy damaging you. Same as the SMGs, just do this in hardcore. Normally, you won't be taking damage as you're living, so it helps to know for sure. Just to get those 10 kills, then you should have that done in no time. And the launchers, 10 kills by hitting enemies with direct impact. That comes down to some luck. Most of the launcher stuff I did passively while working on other weapons, but I did it all almost in rust. Direct lines of fire into enemy spawns, if you can get a spawn trap going. Additionally, if you don't want to lobby surf for rust, objective-based modes are very helpful. You can have a small target window shooting at say a hard point with players on it or a domination flag being captured that you may get the opportunity a little easier there now forged as we mentioned is where things get a bit more not messy but unique per se because at the forge level camos no longer have a universal property of unlock but instead they are challenges at the individual levels based on the weapons in question there are some repeats and save for one example you won't see those challenges reciprocated in the same classification of weapon like you won't see a challenge in the assault rifle category again in the assault rifle category but you do again the only exception being the amr9 and rival 9 those two being smgs both requiring you to get kills shortly after a Yes. Other than that, there's no challenges seen duplicated in the same weapon category. You will see stuff like assault rifles to marksman rifles, but you won't see again any other weapon challenge, two of the same in the assault rifles, LMGs, and so on. So for the sake of avoiding monotony and repetition from our last guide on Forged, the challenges that I do want to reiterate and that aren't necessarily just basic and common sense ones are three kills without dying 10 times. As we'll touch on in just a second, this also applies to the five kills without dying. Your bloodthirsties for the Forge level, and for the priceless level of challenges. These are again ones that track strangely. You can do them legit where you get five kills, die, and do it again. But it seems like right now after you get your first five, they just kind of track randomly for either like every five kills total or just like randomly in general. It's weird because I've seen credit for this where I'd had credit for two on a six kill streak or something like that. I've also seen credit for two at 10 kills total. So it doesn't seem like there's a sort of rhyme or reason, but when you go for these, why you may want to go for those legitimate three to five kill streaks you might finish a match and find that you have more completed than you actually did so i'm not going to complain about that but just know that if you get it done quicker than expected it's probably because of that multi kills well firstly what is a multi kill that's something that is a double or more but with multi kill being that it isn't designated a double kill or triple kill or anything like that if you get a triple ultra frenzy whatever that's higher than a double kill it will not count if you end up getting a quad kill or something like that it doesn't count as two doubles you have to wait for that to refresh for that multi kill to then finish up and then track that you got another one so i'd highly recommend giving that a second if you're going on a tear in say a spawn point or you're just going crazy and rust whatever the case kills while ads and fully loaded this is a challenge that you'll want to do in hardcore because fully loaded means that you have to have every single round in your magazine so if you have 30 rounds in a mag it has to be the first of 30 shots fired meaning that your first bullet does have to kill so in hardcore you'll be able to do that with all the weapons that require this challenge but it's just one that's tedious and kind of annoying but certainly not hard then kills where enemies are affected by your tactical right now this is only tracking your stuns and your flash grenades doesn't seem to work with decoys or anything else like that but it is something that this again is just an annoyingly tedious and frustrating one i would highly recommend surfing for maps that are close quarters based so skid row scrapyard rust those kind of maps that you can end up getting from close quarters situations but with the cover that is necessary so throwing stuns into b flag on scrapyard throwing stuns from room to room in the upper hallways of skid row rust is just well rust hopefully you can end up getting from point a to point b without dying there but i'd highly recommend doing those and just again trying to grind through it that one was not fun but there's no other real easy Easy way about it. Long shot kills. This seems to be the same Modern Warfare 2 architecture for long shots. Thankfully, we don't have to do long shots for every single weapon in the game this time. I think like total, there's probably 80 long shot kills or something like that across the entire interstellar grind. So way more easier to manage, but you're still going to have to recognize four different categories of long shots here. For rifles and battle rifles, it's 38 meters, which has always seemed oddly specific to me. SMGs is 30 meters and pistols are 20 meters. 
dangerous. So again, for these, I'd recommend hardcore for a lot of them, especially the pistols. But even if you do them in core, you still can get away with that. Just again, recognize 38 meters, 30 meters, and 20 meters respectively. Kills with a magnification scope, just for clarity, it quite literally works with any scope that you may equip. The lowest magnification scope is, I want to say the slate reflector and a few other red dot sight ones. So if I'm not mistaken, those still offer a 1.25 to a 1.35 magnification. So literally any optic that you have equipped, just get kills with it afterwards and it counts towards kills with a magnification scope. 15 penetration kills for the cat AMR. This one is an absolute pain. There's no way around it. It is just something that's tedious, it's annoying, and it is something that's gonna take a little bit of time. But for best reference, I'd say the fencing on Scrapyard by B, the wood paneling in War, the glass on High Rise, Terminal, any other map with that, metal catwalks, the grating there on sub base, shooting through the plane on terminal. There's a couple of different spots that just work out very nicely. Though, again, it does take a bit of time. Just simply get to those maps that you want, get that positioning you want, and set them up, and it's just 15 kills from there. Make sure that you do see the pop-up for wall bang when you take these shots, though, because sometimes they don't count if you say somehow clear the chain link fencing cleanly, where you don't wall bang that. That happened to me quite a few times, so if you are further away, there's a better chance that you do hit that. Or, again, if you want to be right up on top of it, you can, of course, aim in on the chain link fence part but if you also shoot through glass make sure that you're not breaking the glass with that shot rather shooting through it and cracking it so usually the first shot of every glass that you end up shooting it takes about two shots to go through and break the glass but if you can end up getting that off and the glass does not break that will count as a wall bang as well so again tedious but it is something you just gotta have to grind through again kills on damaged enemies with a core 45 is one that is a tricky one if you don't know what you're looking for but very easy if you do just go into core in any mode and get 15 kills with the core 45. Injured means that you don't necessarily finish them off, but you can, because in core, you're not going to end up getting a one-shot kill from full health with the core 45. It'll take three to four shots, so in the same logic of how that tracks, if you end up damaging them with two to three shots, that kill shot is going to be the one that kills them while they're already damaged, if that makes sense. So it's truly just a matter of getting 15 kills at that point in core. Destroying 25 enemy equipment with the RGL. This is one that is, again, tedious, frustratingly long, especially if you're like me and you've gone 20 matches in a row without seeing any sort of claymore or something like that. But these only work with proximity mines and claymores at the time being. And I think maybe the scatter mines as well, but I'd love to see this expanded into like field upgrades, like your ammo box, your comm scrambler, your ACS device, any tactical insertions or deployable cover. That would make things so much easier. But what I'd highly recommend for this is running the engineer vest so you can end up seeing where enemy field upgrades, kill streaks, and equipment end up being and just hoping you get lucky. One thing that does help out that is either hit or miss, some people are really cool about it, some people are like, no, I'm never gonna help you, sucks for you. Type in game chat to see if anybody has claymores they can put down if they're not using them. At that point, maybe you get some friendly gamers to help you out along the way, but again, this is just one that takes time. You're gonna have to actively look for them with that engineer vest, and fingers crossed you can get it done quicker than I did because it was one of the last things I got for Forged before moving on into Priceless. And then finally, the melees get 20 kills without the enemy damaging you and five kills without dying five times. The five kills without dying five times tracks just like how we said. Sometimes it does take all five kills. Sometimes it could be two kills. We don't really know how that one works, but it bugs out and again, I'm not complaining about it if it gives me the camo easier. 20 kills without the enemy damaging you for the Karambit. That's something that I just throw on a riot shield on your back and then just, again, run around those close quarters maps. I truly think that for these kind of things that Skid Row is probably the best map you can get because you can patrol that B area just weaving in and out of those rooms without enemies really ever getting around to you. So highly recommend that kind of stuff. But that's your forged level challenges. But Priceless now moving over into our final challenges. Well, Priceless, you're almost home free. You've got 36 challenges left and then you've got Interstellar. And for the most part, if you do grind it out, you got a good chunk of time during the day, you might even be able to get all 36 of these challenges done in a single day. My initial recommendation would be to do the annoying challenges first. Melees with the revenge kills and kills from behind, the RGL with double kills, pistols with that WSP stinger with 25 kills on the enemy affected by your tactical using a Kimbo. Those and a couple of other random ones are absolutely the most annoying and tedious ones. So if you get those out of the way, you are truly going to breeze through the rest of the challenges available for the priceless category. Revenge kills and kills from behind. I did both 
both of these in free for all for my melees more targets for kills being that there's seven because there's eight players total in a free for all so more than the standard 6v6 matchup but also i found that it was a bit quicker to get revenge kills as well because when you died those spawns oftentimes kept you pretty close to the action depending on what map you're on so you could be very well easily in that place of a revenge spawn you spawn right next to the guy that kills you then the other thing just know you're going to tank your kd a bit you're gonna lose matches so that win loss is gonna go down but it does not matter i think that you can knock both these out in just a little bit of time nothing too crazy going for these in free for all have that riot shield on your back go for that melee and just sprint around the map usually with dead silence i'd recommend as well or that covert sneakers equipped as well the double kills with the launcher this is one that i did passively at first but now that we're seeing rust 24 7 introduced here for the upcoming week i'd highly recommend grinding that out especially if there is a hardcore variation of that in the mode selection you'll find these really easy to launch into spawns and get doubles you'll be hated by the lobby in doing so but i mean who cares you're gonna make some enemies along the way to interstellar anyway so may as well get it out of the way but if Rust 24-7 isn't an option for you, or you don't want to play Rust, you don't want to surf for Rust, I found that Scrapyard also played really well for this as well, getting a few each time that I played there. This, just like the knives, will be some that is a bit more tedious, and you'll die quite a bit, but you'll get it done with a bit of commitment. Kills while affected by your tactical, again, this, just like the Forge challenges, I'd recommend you use stuns for close quarters maps. This, I did a lot of mine on Skid Row, again, patrolling those upper hallways, being able to be in a room across from somebody, then end up stunning into there them being sort of trapped and unable to move because of that stun but also having the cover of not being shot in the back from just being able to dip in between those different rooms there chances are you're gonna see max two maybe three players in a room in those upper hallways so it is something that if you stun somebody you can usually get in and get out there and hardcore i did this as well just so that one bullet would kill with a stinger at least you do have a bit more range than the melees and other weapons you had to do this with but i'd still recommend something close quarters for you other challenges to consider the 25 extreme magnification kills for priceless is eight times and up they do specify that in the challenge so an eight times magnification scope there but the part that ends up being the sort of unwritten portion is that it has to be at the eight times magnification and up there are a lot of different hybrid and toggle zooms that you have like a three times optic that goes all the way up to an eight or a nine times magnification you have to get the kills in those eight to nine time magnifications or whatever it is above eight so a lot of the times you'll also see that those scopes do reset when you die so you have to make sure you toggle back in to that highest zoom as well the five kills without dying five times again is one that does track sporadically and seemingly in a bugged fashion so just go for kills if you get five kills you will of course get credit for it but sometimes you'll also just get credit for it when you're not getting five kills in a single life five kills with a magazine 10 times again act similarly to that bug three where you can end up getting those five kills but if you do have to die before you reload you can maybe get one or two more that will still credit to that last sort of magazine hip fire kills while moving and strafing they categorize it as two different things but it is exactly the same you just have to be moving for both of those so just know that going in that it's not as sort of broken up as you may think it's just worded weirdly 10 kills without being in the enemy's line of sight this is essentially just kills from behind it is kind of tedious and sometimes you can get kills from the side where a player may not see you and it credits but honestly the easiest way to go about it is just trying to hit those flank kills and getting kills on people that as they walk by you you shoot them in the back long shots just like in the forged as we mentioned same as last year 38 meters again for battle rifles for those long shots just bear that in mind and then suppressed clean kills are the only other ones that i think are kind of confusing here and how they're worded that's just don't take any damage so it's an odd way to word it but again just kills without getting damaged and also with a suppressor on it so you do that and again a lot of the other stuff is just very very straightforward and simple challenges like the cat amr is to get suppressed headshot kills put a suppressor on get a headshot there's no real tip that really needs to be said for that 10 burst kills with a dg58 that's just 10 one burst kills play hardcore and that is just going to be 10 kills the MTZ-556 has 10 kills affected by your tactical while in tax stance. That's, again, the same tip we just mentioned, but making sure that you get the kill while you're in tax stance, not necessarily hip firing or ADSing. So you can see a lot of this stuff is really self-explanatory and doesn't necessarily need a whole ton of tips that we need to run down every single one. But again, that really comes down to it. A lot of those ones that we did want to mention, there are some things that do need those asterisk marks, but you do all that kind of stuff and you unlock Interstellar and it's all yours. That is really it. Again, I think this year the grind is pretty simple, but again, just tedious. 
So that is where we're going to wrap it up. Those are my tips here for unlocking Interstellar in as fast and efficient a manner as possible. So let me know your thoughts down below. What do you think of the camo? What do you think of the grind? Are you going to go for it? Maybe not. Whatever the case, drop your thoughts. Now, before we wrap everything up, make sure you check out my friends over at Gamer Advantage. Again, the best deals going on right now for Black Friday. They're just getting started, but it is something that there's a 25% off site-wide discount right now, but you stack code Espresso on top of that, and you get 35% off your entire order of what I believe are the best blue light glasses on the market. I've worked with these guys for over two years now, going on three at this point, which is crazy for me to consider, and I'd seriously recommend them 10 out of 10 times. I've used blue light glasses in the past, and I've used those cheap pair that can find on Amazon, but they don't compare at all. Investing in your vision health is absolutely something that I think is worthwhile, and yeah, Gamer Advantage glasses are an investment, but I do think you will enjoy them if you want to check them out. You can learn more at their website, linked down there in the description below. They can do everything to describe the science, the clinical studies, all that kind of stuff way better than I can. But what I can say is that almost three years of using them now, they're the best that I've used on the market. So highly recommend them if you guys want to check it out. Again, Code Espresso stacks with their site-wide discount, giving you 35% off your entire order. One of the best, if not the best discount we've seen all year so far. So check that out if you're at all interested. But for now, that's what we're going to call it. So let me know your thoughts again down below. If you guys enjoyed the video, you found it at all insightful, do me a favor and drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a single thing running all things Modern Warfare 3 as we gear up for more guides, tutorials, best class setups, news and information, all that kind of stuff we got you covered. Plus, Season 1 and that Warzone launch is coming up soon that I'd love to have in the community as well. But for now, thanks so much for watching. Modest Espresso. I'll see you later. Take care and peace.